Good morning, students. Uh, so, okay, Mohammed Abdinur, you're present. You were you present last class? No, I was not present last class. Uh, uh, I was very busy yeah. according to. My, okay. uh, yeah, so no problem. I, no yeah, problem. I got confused with the other student. I think his name is Muhammad Khalif. So yeah, I, yeah, Muhammad will join soon. I was informed for him, so he said. Uh, shortly, I will join for the class. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so, Muhammad uh, Abdinur, I believe that you have already gone through the recording and uh, just catch up with whatever you missed last class. And uh, today being lecture five, but after this, we'll be doing chapter five and chapter six as well. So it would be like lecture five, lecture six, so that just to give ample of time for the students to uh, prepare themselves for the final exams, because I do not want to, you know, carry on till the last minute, just a week before your exam, so that you'll have enough time. So this class would be a little bit longer, but the chapters are a bit small. Okay, it depends upon class interaction and how it goes on. Chapters are uh, not too very elaborate, but they're quite, uh, you know, uh, it is a kind of, uh, you know, a chapter that is a very important chapter, but yet, like, you know, it is something that is something practical in nature and it's easy to understand. And uh, so I think we should be able to complete chapter five and chapter six. And next class, we'll be doing chapter seven and chapter eight. And that's all with the syllabus. And uh, we'll do a little bit of revision and also explain the question paper pattern in the next class. Okay. So uh, today we're going to learn about air airlines operation control. So what is this airlines operation control? So obviously there is a control mechanism, this operation control mechanism. And just generally speaking, it normally involves, I'm sure you know that because you're from the airline industry, Abdinur. So it involves what, like, you know, mechanical controllers, signage, uh, there should be certain electronic in instrumentation, you know, certain equipments that are involved. So the operation control is basically in the airports. It, when we're talking about airlines operation control, we're talking about a particular control center where you can call it in an abbreviated form as AOCC. Okay, that is the airline airports operation control uh, center or airlines operation control center, which is a main hub in an airport where internal and external parties work together to develop certain airport operations um, in a you know, comprehensive manner, right? So today we'll go through these systems and see what are um, you know, significant factors that revolve around the AOCC. So flight operation controls main purpose is of course to exercise control over initiating, directing or terminating a flight. So I think this is self-explanatory. What is the main purpose of the flight's operational control? The main purpose of this entire mechanism is to, uh, you know, control, have a control over the initiation of the flight or directing the flight movements or even terminating a flight. But sometimes flights are called off or cancelled. So all these uh, aspects are taken care of by flight operational control mechanism. And for this, there is the AOCC that is, I'm reiterating, Airline Operations Control Sector, uh, sorry, Center, which is a very uh, important part of the airline company. And this is situated in the airport. And it's also called as Airports Operation Control Center, which is a body that is responsible for monitoring and resolving operational issues. Operational issues of airlines, operation issues of flight takeoff, landing, or even you know terminating certain flights and so on. So this body comprises teams of human experts who specialize in addressing or solving aircraft related problems, crew member issues, passenger problems, which may disrupt any flight's smooth operations and so on. Thereby, this is a process of operations recovery or disruption management. I'm repeating, airlines operation control is a process which involves operation recovery or disruption management. In case there is any disruption, how do they manage, uh, you know, 
the disruption in the smooth operation of flights. So airline operation control can be bifurcated to two phases. That is, you can you know broadly classify it into two for the purpose of study. That is stra strategic airline operation control and tactical airline operational control. Now, what is the strategic airline operation control? Strategic airline operation control involves planning and scheduling. I'm repeating, strategic airline operation control involves planning and scheduling. So planning and scheduling are the precursors of strategic airline operations. That is something which is at the beginning of strategic airline operations. Now here, the operation groups who are involved in the operations, they devise a plan for the aircraft rotation for each trip and prepare a schedule of crew trips on a periodical basis. So they prepare a plan which involves even like the number of uh, crew members and how many of them should be there and who should be involved. And, you know, they schedule each of the members, the crew members trips on a periodical basis, depending upon um, which crew member should travel to which country and so on. So they divide them into groups and then they say, okay, you know, this particular group will travel to this nation and this would be, this group would be a part of this particular flight number and would catch this particular route and so on. And what they do it do they do is they do it on a periodical basis. So there is a kind of a rotation as well. So next is tactical airline operation control. At this phase, there is pre-planned strategic plans. They are implemented. Pre-planned strategic plans which are implemented. That is, they you know plan it in advance strategically. And they also foresee operational constraints. And when they foresee these operational constraints, they are addressed as well and are resolved. And then there is a rescheduling of operations. So normally, see, they would prepare a strategic plan for any, you know, for any flight movement, of course. So there is a strategic plan and then they implement the plan. In fact, they always have a contingency plan as well in the sen sense that they kind of sometimes foresee operation constraint just in case they say if X situation occurs, if Y situation occurs, then what's going to happen? What are we going to do? What is our backup plan? So they keep those operation constraints in mind and they prepare a contingency plan. And if at all that particular you know, hurdle occurs or that impediment comes to the fore. So at that time, they address that particular problem, they solve the particular problem, and then again, reschedule the entire operations. Further, so this is tactical airline operation control. So the first part, we have studied it in two phases. One is a strategic airline operation control, like how do they strategize it? And then is how they tactfully handle it. Further, the aspect of flight operation control, which involves maintenance and station operations, is managed by relevant center. So this is all theoretical, which you would see it practically. Are you understanding me? This is how it is theoretically, uh, like, you know, this is a theoretical content where you would actually practically involve yourself there probably at the airports or if you're part of the airlines. So that is a practical part of it. But this is, theoretically, we categorize it into, you know, strategic and tactical. So the tactical part of it involves the tact, the particular, uh, you know, the, the speciality that is involved in, or the, you know, the way they implement it as specialists in a particular field. So the aspect of flight operation control involves maintenance. So they have maintenance team, which is involved there, and there is station operations, which is managed by relevant centers, that is airline operation control center, AOCC, the maintenance operation control center located at the airline's major facility and the station operation control center. Now, there are airline operations control groups that is G, A-O-C-G, not C-C, A-O-C-G, uh, C-G, that is, of course, they are part of this A-O-C-C at the center. So the airline operations may be referred to by different departmental names, such as systems control department or airlines control department. However, this A-O-C-C may be divided basically into three functional groups. So what are these groups? One is airline operations controller or systems operation controller. Next is a flight dispatch group. 
And the third one is crew operations group. So what are uh, the, you know, the duties of these groups? Or let us see what is the role that is played by each of these groups. The airline operations controller. Now, the airline operations controllers are responsible for all the system schedules, management, maintenance, upgradation, and efficient delivery. So here, they resolve the issues or the problems that may spring up during operation. So they kind of, as I said earlier, sometimes they prepare, prepare a contingency plan and they keep it ready that just in case, always there is a backup plan, in case there is some issue that might spring up during operations, so they immediately, you know, they come to the contingency plan and immediately implement whatever is like, you know, pre-planned basically. So they resolve the issues that may spring up during operations and prepare revised operational schedules based on the inputs received from the corresponding departments. However, the rescheduling may be strategized as per the internal policies of each airline. Last class, we studied that whatever is done, it is done within the ambit of law and certain policies which are, you know, uh, devised by each airline and also certain policies that have to be complied with by the airline industry as a whole. Next is the flight dispatch group. The flight dispatch group is responsible for flight planning and dispatch which comprises licensed professional or personnel who are certified flight dispatchers who are responsible for the safety and operational control of each flight before takeoff and during flight. So they are the ones who are responsible, who give it kind of a final go saying that, yes, you are ready now to take off. However, they are just not, uh, I mean, in charge of just uh, takeoffs, but also they monitor the flights while the flight is in transition or during the flight, rather. So by law, the responsibility for the safety and operational control of each flight is the equal responsibility of the flight dispatcher as well as the captain of the aircraft. Because during the flight, it is the flight dispatcher and the captain of the aircraft who, you know, they interact with each other as and when necessary. They are connected and the dispatcher normally, uh, you know, he monitors the flight while the flight is in transition or while the flight has, after the flight is already taken off as well. So flights also may be canceled sometimes for safety concerns. Like sometimes if there's like weather conditions, for example, so flights may be canceled. Uh, you know, if there is heavy snow or there is storm or there's heavy rain, or, you know, there is no clear visibility. Uh, I mean, uh, for the pilots, for example, and if they would discern in their um, experience and the dispatcher feels in his experience that, yes, it's going to create some problems in air. So it's better that the flights are canceled or if there is flight, if there is connecting flights and there is a flight delay from the other side. So they would say, OK, flights are canceled because the flight would not be able to make it, for example, due to weather condition or maybe technical issues or whatever. So the flight dispatcher is like, you know, he is quite vigilant, uh, not just, uh, he's not the one just to give it a go, but he's also vigilant during, you know, takeoff, also during um, the, uh, you know, when the flight is in air, and also even before takeoff, before giving it a go, he might even cancel it for safety concerns. So the FDC, that is the dispatch group, generates flight plans. They monitor aircraft load. And like, what is the load, the total load of like the passengers as well as the baggages? Like what's the aircraft load? They monitor it. It must be within parameters. It must be compliant with the policies. So the flight uh, dispatch attendant, he generates, also pretendant, he generates flight plans. He monitors aircraft load and fuel restrictions. He checks like what is the minimum requirement and whether it would be enough for the journey. He would just check everything, monitors crew as well, that 
like everything is intact as per the policy, then he, uh, you know, if there is any facility restrictions and he also tracks the safe progress of each flight, the FDG may be located in the airport's operation section. So the other groups, such as the meteorology group, that is the, the one who is like normally uh, in charge of uh, studying the weather and so on, and a load control group support, load control group, both these groups normally they support the FDG. Now the dispatcher's overall responsibilities, if you try to, you know, sum it up, you, you we could say that the dispatcher's overall responsibility includes planning, flight dispatch, and flight following. That is, you know, he while the flight is in the air, so even after the flight takes off, so he normally monitors the movement of the flight. The flight dispatcher also look after looks after the fuel requirements of the aircraft, whether it's enough for a particular journey. Next is the crew operations group. Now, the crew operations group is responsible for managing crew members as they are assigned and the airline route network. However, the basic crew operations involve scheduling, crew following, and crew rescheduling. Again, I'm repeating, it involves scheduling, like how many members must be there in a particular flight. Then they schedule so and so groups, divide them into groups and how many members should be there who, and who is responsible for what, they schedule it. And then they pursue that particular plan. They execute the plan. And in case there are any last minute changes, then of course there is crew rescheduling. Say someone is sick, someone is not able to make it or someone has gone on a holiday. So there is again, last. if there is any last minute changes, then there is crew rescheduling. So any questions? So flight operations, they're normally taking care of the operation control groups and operation control groups basically are divided into three. That is systems operation controller or airlines operation controller, flight dispatch group, which takes place, uh, which takes uh, care of flight takeoff, as well as it monitors flights in air and crew operations group, which takes care of the crew. That is, um, it schedules crew members and monitors uh, crew operations. And by and large, airline operation control can be bifurcated to, into two phases, that is strategic airline operation control, which is a precursor for strategic airline operations and tactical airline operation control. Is there any question? Do you have any questions? If not, we will go to our second chapter, which is again, a continuation of this. And it is quite simple, of course. Operational deviations. Now, airline operations deviations, operational deviations, or the problems, that, this is the most simplest, uh, I mean, chapter again, but you would understand as we are going through the slides, like, um, I think you can even relate to it since you're working there. So what are the operational deviations? What are the, um, the kind of problems that can come up, you know, of, uh, that can could hinder smooth flight operations. So these are called operational deviations. Operational deviations are nothing but anything that poses as an impediment or a hurdle in smooth flight operations. Now, airline schedules may change and this will lead to overall operational deviation. Operational deviations involve a series of subsequent changes that need to implement that, that needs to be implemented rather in the entire process and the flights need to be rescheduled. So I'm repeating what are operational deviations? Their operational deviations involve a series of subsequent changes that needs to be implemented in the entire process and flights need to be rescheduled. So that means it is in terms of any impediments that come to the fore as against smooth flight operations. At times, rerouting may be required, and that would lead to irregular operations that need to be ironed out, obviously. So if there is operational deviation, that means there might be a possibility that 
certain flights may be rerouted. In, instead of going via a particular place, a particular route, they might take some other route in case there's some other problem there, if they see, say, weather problems. You know, sometimes if you, if, in your experience, since you're already working there, you might have observed that, okay, this flight is not coming via this route, but it is taken some other route. So sometimes, you know, when there are any impediments or hurdles to smooth operations, they can be even flight rerouting. And it may be required at times, and that would again lead to irregular operations. That would, the normal operations would be again shaken up. So there would be an irregularity that needs to be ironed out, that needs to be addressed. Now, such deviations are handled by airline operation control. Again, the same department, the AOCD or Airlines Operation Control Department or Airline Operation Control Center, AOCC, the same department. Now, that means they just do not take care of flight takeoff or they just not monitor the flight and error, but they also take care of flight deviations. So the, the Airlines Operation Control Center has several methods to counter or to resolve flight time deviations. To resolve the issue, they might reduce the actual aircraft turn time or adjust the flight speed, cancel probably one flight or more, if needed, even change the crew, and also absorb scheduled slack. So to achieve the desired on-time result, the flight schedulers may add a buffer. That is, they may keep a buffering time so that they would come to a particular uh, you know, flight schedule that is, they come to that on-time result. Sometimes when you fly, you would say that, okay, we have you know, reached a particular destination uh, on time, they would say, or they would say that the flight has arrived five minutes early. Sometimes they have the buff, they have this buffering time that is for the internal uh, team members. They have the buffering time, but what is told to the passengers is some other time. So they have this buffering time so that they will achieve that on time result. Next is weather conditions are again one of the prominent reasons for delays in flight. And of course, even they add to the operational deviation or impediments in the smooth operation of any flight. Next is, apart from weather conditions, airlines ground support services such as baggage handling, equipment breakdowns, passenger handling, etc. can also pose a cause for operational deviation. Apart from that, gate scheduling. Now, how can gate scheduling be an impediment? How can gate scheduling be a hurdle in smooth operations? Like, for example, like if there is a flight that has landed and when it has landed, say, for example, the timing did not match. There is something that, you know, posed as a hurdle or as an impediment, some other reason that came up. And there is still an aircraft that is still not taken off, for example. So that particular gate, which is suitable for an aircraft that has just landed, are you understanding me? Imagine that situation. The aircraft has just landed and it's a huge aircraft. So as per the size of the aircraft, certain gates are suitable. Say there is another aircraft at say but particular gate and that is still not taken off due to say, say technical reasons, whatever reasons, technical reasons. Now, what will happen? The flight that has just landed will have to keep waiting and just moving around in the runway till this particular gate is empty. So now what happens? There is a delay of flight, uh, you know, uh, takeoff for that particular aircraft, which is still there at the gate. And again, for the, uh, you know, the passengers to disembark, again, there is, uh, you know, a delay for them to, you know, fulfill all the formalities, to disembark the flight and go and take the bag. So entire stuff, again, needs rescheduling. So I understand. So this is so sensitive. The entire... Uh, flight, uh, airports operation, airline operation rather, airlines operation are all integrated and they're all uh, kind of connected with each other. So if one system is shaken off, every other system like you know should be you know informed and immediately there should be swift changes made. So now going by the slide, gate scheduling is yet another factor that may contribute to operational deviation since for example, gate sizes vary and likewise the facilities at each gate will vary obviously. So not all gates are designed for every type of aircraft. 
Now, in case there is a jumbo aircraft that needs a considerable gate size, after it has landed, and assuming there is not an empty gate available, that this would lead to a delay in passenger disembarking and subsequent delay in all the attached formalities. Now, again, airport congestion may again cause operational deviations as well. Next is taxi time. What is taxi time? Which means time between aircraft or taxi pull off from the gate to the takeoff. That is from the time the, you know, the aircraft pulls off from the particular gate and then goes through the runway up, up to the time of its takeoff. That is called taxi time. So if the aircraft does not receive the appropriate signal to take off, then the taxi time will be extended. What happens if the aircraft does not re receive appropriate signal to take off? It will be just going around the runway. It just keeps moving around the runway. Sometimes there, there has been a situation, in my experience, where the aircraft keeps moving for even one hour on the runway and it is one hour delayed. So if it does not receive appropriate signal or if they see some kind of a problem, so it would not take off at all. Then the taxi time may be extended again, which would lead to again operational deviation. Now, obviously, if the flight has still not taken off, that means the flight is delayed. So again, all the other procedures have to be followed. Like, you know, every other system that is connected needs to be rescheduled. Then is lack of coordination within the internal departments and within the airport control units lead to operation deviations as well. Sometimes if there is no proper coordination within the internal departments and within the airport control units, that would lead to airport deviations as well. Then, then what is what would be done then in case there is airport deviation? Obviously, there would be rescheduling of flights and sometimes even rerouting of flights. So these are the two prominent solutions which are there. There is rescheduling and rerouting, which involves humongous procedures, of course, within them, which all have to be done swiftly, you know, and as fast as possible to sort out the problems that has caused the deviation in the smooth operations. So do you have any questions? Okay, so can one of you recapitulate what we learned today? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, the instructor. Uh, we have been learned for uh, two chapters. Uh, one is for uh, uh, well, it talks about what we call uh, an airline operation control center or, or something that regarding the dispatch department. Um, for a co operation control of airlines, it depends on all of all of about the dispatch and arrival of the aircraft for the airports. So the chapter one was 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 regarding for AOCC of the aircraft, in my opinion. Okay, so that means we could say that the core function of the entire avionic system okay, of this particular flight operation is the organization and management of flight processes. So basically we have spoken of the, you know, how it is organized and what happens in this control, you know, control centers. So basically this avionic, avionic systems is all about organization and management of flight processes. Last class, I remember we studied about the different types of, you know, airport operations, like this just mentioned about airside operations and billing and invoicing, information management systems and all. And today we are learned about AOCC, airline operations control centers and what are their rules and what are the different groups that are involved, like flight dispatch, group crude uh crew management group and so on so why do you think even we learned this i just want to ask you this question as a revision why do you think airport operation is important because it's important is the one who is responsible uh, the safety dispatch of the aircraft from one station to another without without of this uh, operation control and center team no aircraft will not dispatch or dispatch from any station so they have been responsible for technical issues relating to the aircraft dispatch from okay. one station to another 
Perfect. So that means they will also take care of any malfunctioning, if any. So apart from that, why why do they why are they important? They just check whether security concerns are already met. If there is no malfunctions, if there is no other impediments, and only after checking everything and assuring the safety of a flight. So that is very much important. And only then they give a go for you know flight takeoff. So therefore, every part of airport airport's entire operational uh, you know, life, it does play a significant role and it does have a significant impact on, you know, the entire process. And in fact, somewhere it also affects the experience of the passengers. Right? Yes, yes, it's right. Because it does impact the passengers as well. Because safety concerns, that means you're concerned about the passenger, you're concerned about like the cargo, you're concerned about the passengers, you're concerned about the customers of the airlines and so on. There is an interesting fact just um, I came across some days back, just only for your knowledge, it's apart from this theory part of it. It seems to be, a sh there, there has been a study or a research that was conducted, which um, seat in the aircraft is, you know, more safe. So uh, practically, they had to literally, you know, crash an aircraft, you know, to know which seat is, um, you know, practically safe. So in that research, by, you know, literally crashing the aircraft, they realized that the seat at the wings are more safest. This is just uh, kind of an additional information for you, apart from the theory part of it. Just it's kind of an interesting information, so I'm sharing it with you. So they say that the the seats which are at the wings are more safer than the seats which are right in front. And after that, sometimes the seats which are right behind are again, you know a little bit more safer than those seats which are right in front. That, that means if you think about it, sometimes the business class is really not so safer, but still it's it, it depends like what kind of a crash it is. But research says that normally the flight, the seats at the wings are, you know, more safer than the other seats. So therefore this, you know, and the airlines industry and even the airports, it's just not about the operations. It also involves research team as well, who keep studying safety uh, aspects and who keep, you know, you know, giving their reports, you know, and they keep giving the reports about safety and, you know, the research and uh, development team keeps working on the other hand, they keep giving their reports and the reports go on to the particular manufacturers. And, you know, it's, it's like, um, in the, in, in the entire process, there are many people who are actually involved. If you talk about safety of, you know, safety of uh, aircrafts. So, well, so now we are going to discuss, uh, just tell me, let me know. Now we have completed six chapters. Okay. So do you have any difficulty in the six chapters? Is there something that you want to ask me even about chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four? Okay. If you do not have any question, I still give you time. Next class, you just jot down some points if you have any questions so that you would ask me. Next is about your question paper uh, pattern. I will just, uh, you know, try to explain to you the question paper pa pattern. Um, okay, we might get disconnected now. Okay, and in case we get disconnected, just join back. I will tell you the question paper pattern right now. Okay, just join back. <laughs>